Close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Give the mind a good, comfortable place to stay. Notice how the breathing feels. If it doesn't feel comfortable, you can change it. All kinds of breathing that you can experiment with to find out what feels best for you right now. But soothing for the mind, soothing for the body. Energizing for the mind, energizing for the body. Whatever you need right now. Try to find a breath that provides that. It's medicine for the mind. The Buddhist teachings as a whole are medicine for the mind. The Buddha called himself a doctor. Of course, he was looking after ills of the mind, not so much ills of the body. Because it's the ills of the mind that are more important. The diseases in the body, even though there are many of them, they can harm you only in this lifetime. Whereas when the mind is diseased with greed, aversion, and delusion, the harm comes not only now, but on into many lifetimes in the future. So you've got to look after the diseases of the mind. And they're like the body. If your resistance is up, then no matter what other people may do, you've got a good chance of fighting it off. If your resistance is down, then the least little thing comes in and it can knock you over. So there may be things outside that are ordinarily would make you greedy or angry or deluded. But if you've got your resistance up, in other words, you've got the mind settled and it's protected by its own discernment, you can see those things and not fall for the, the greedy parts of the mind. Because we do have these impulses inside. It's not the case that the things outside make us sick. The mind itself has its causes of illness inside. Simply the things outside provide it with the opportunity to come out. But if you decide not to take the opportunity, then you're safe. You can be surrounded by all kinds of beautiful things and not feel any desire. You can be surrounded by all kinds of horrible things and not feel any anger or aversion. So look after your mind. Remember the Buddha's basic course of treatment. It's generosity, virtue, meditation. These are their medicines. They're the basic medicines. Now you have to work on the details yourself. It's like in the old days with the Thai doctors, they'd have what they call their ya mo yai, which is their basic medicine. They'd have a big pot of it, always ready. And then if you came with one disease, he would, the doctor would add this or that. If you came with, an, with another disease, he'd add something else. So the Buddha's not here to add those special ingredients just for you. So you've got to look at his main course of treatment and then figure out what adjustments you're going to require that stay within the basic principles. In other words, you have to learn how to become your own doctor, looking after the illnesses of your mind. But the Buddha gives you this course of treatment. And it's simply matter if you're learning the skill as to what to apply at what time. What times you need bitter medicine, what times you need heavier medicine, what times you need sweet medicine. There's a time and a place for the different kinds of medicine within his course of treatment, but you've got to learn how to read your illnesses and then check up on what the Buddha has to offer. Because he's got a complete course of treatment. It's simply up to us to develop the skill to apply it for our particular needs. But that's the basic intention. Is it's a medicine for the mind. And as long as you realize that the mind has its diseases, you have a good sense of the value of the Dharma. It's the people who don't see that their minds are diseased. Those are the ones who don't see any value there. And when you treat your diseases, and you get an even greater sense of how valuable the Dharma is.